let's go. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Sunday at Pentecost. Welcome to the friend that's on the screen as well. It's good to have you with us. We begin with the Thanksgiving for Baptist. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life and our salvation. Amen. Joining to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are filled with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God. From the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, called forth life in which you took the life. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery and freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water, your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. 
We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. To shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join in singing. We build on a rock for our opening.
people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who you love, who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Daniel, the 12th chapter. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of the people, shall rise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Psalm 16, we will read the psalm responsibly. Protect me, O God, I take, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my life is in the But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out my offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is to you who uphold my lot. My boundaries is close as the dust of land. Indeed, you have had a rich care. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave. Nor let your holy one see the dead. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is faithfulness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from Acts, the second. Law came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Please rise for the spoken gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Then they sent to Jesus some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please join me in a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be pleased in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I want to start with a little recap of last week's sermon. Point one was we don't have to, we get to. Yes, yes. When it comes to figuring out what to do with the gifts that God has given us, that God has shared with us, we don't have to discern, we don't have to do certain things to be good and get to Christians. We get to do things. We have opportunities. When it comes to determining how much you want to give on your intent to share from that you're putting in the green envelopes and in the basket, it's not a matter of you have to, it's a matter of you get to. And I hope that you discern in that spirit. And when it comes to how we're going to apply our time and our talents in this coming year, ministries that we engage in at this place, I hope it is not an onerous obligation to have to, but it is a joyful, excited gift. The attitude of the giver is important, maybe even more important than the size of the gift. In 2 Corinthians it says this, the point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves and cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. That's one point. The other point from last week I want to remind you is God doesn't need blank, but our neighbors do. God doesn't need our good works. You don't have to prove yourself as a faithful enough Christian to get God's attention or to get salvation. But you and I have neighbors around us who need our good works, who need something we can offer. God doesn't need our time and our talents and our treasures. God's the creator of time. God has every talent there is to be had. God makes the treasures the most fundamental level. But maybe our neighbors do need our time. And they need our talents and our engagement with them and our treasures. God doesn't need the blessings of our offerings and our benevolent gifts and our social ministries, but our neighbor does. You could say it this way. If you read Micah 6, 6 to 8, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and Tens of thousands of rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? We ask the question how much am I supposed to give? How many dollars or how many sheep or ram or, or, or baths of oil or whatever? And God says, what I really want is for you to engage your neighbor. That's what justice is, isn't it? And that's what mercy is. And that's what humility is. Humility makes space for God and space for the neighbor. So that's the sum up from last week. There are two important texts that can speak to us as we as a community are figuring out about what we're going to do in this coming year with our time and our talents and our treasures. They can speak to us as we lay out our visions and our what we want to accomplish. 
in the days ahead and what resources we have to put forth to those holy callings in order to make them happen. They can speak to us about living into the joy of getting to do something rather than the oppression of having to do something. And they can speak to us about as we consider who is our neighbor and what might our neighbor be that we can provide. So two texts. One, the first one is the gospel text. I've titled it a tax in question. And in this um, account in the gospel, you have an unlikely group of people coming to talk to Jesus. The Herodians and the Pharisees usually have nothing to do with each other. You gotta wonder what like a bear stand and a package stand get together and come to talk to you about something. Right? For a red state and blue state, all of a sudden get all, all together and working on something. Or where the Pharisee and the Herodian get together and they're up to something. You, your hat should be raised already. Do you think that they were really concerned? You know, Jesus is smart and he's teaching God's way, and we're just troubled at that at a deep level about is it morally right to give our money to the Romans or not? Maybe we should ask him for some tax advice. Let's go do that. Do you think that's where they're coming from? I don't think so. I think it's more of a trap. I think they're coming in there and saying to Jesus, hey, should we pay the Romans taxes or not? Because if he says no, you shouldn't pay the Romans taxes, the Romans are going to be mighty upset. And they have their eyes on the temple all the time. That work will get right back to them. And if he says yes, you should pay taxes to the Romans in the seat of the temple, that's also going to cause them a lot of problems. That's a lose-lose situation. No matter how he answers, if he picks one of the two, he's in trouble. And they know this. They're trying to catch him. And Jesus is aware of their duplicity, and so he gives that answer that he does. Go and get a coin. And so they go and get the denarius. Is there a problem with having a coin in the temple? Because, you know, when the Romans make their coin, if they put the like, face of the emperor in the title, kind of like we do with our coinage, what's that called in the Ten Commandments? Graven image. Graven image. Yeah, you're not supposed to have those in the temple. What they should have had was the temple currency that when you came to the temple, you could exchange regular outside money with the appropriate inside money to make an offering. But these guys, oh yeah, Jesus, I got one right here. Out they pull out their coin. It says something about their motives right there. And he says to them that the question, whose picture and whose inscription is on the coin? Well, the emperor's. Okay. Then give to the emperor's whatever is the emperor's and give to God whatever is God's. Marvelous story. It begs the question for us, well, what is God's? Right? I mean, we kind of have an idea of what the emperor is asking for from the tax form or from the collector. But what is God's? Or maybe the better question, what is it God's? What do we have in our lives that, that doesn't come from God but a primary source or a secondary source? Our talents, our abilities, our loved ones, our relationships, the freedoms we have, every privilege we have, every blessing we have comes from God. So if we're really supposed to give God everything that's God's, what's that look like? Hmm. What is the amount we give to consider sharing with God? If we understand that everything we have is God's to begin with. You know, people want to talk about tithing a lot when you get the stewardship time. Is tithing that the goal? You gotta get up to 10%, or is tithing the benchmark? You start with 10% and then put it on top of that. What do you think? Do you have to do that? Or do you get to do that? Does that help any if it's an uncomfortable moment? One of the things Rush Limbaugh said, this is about the only thing I'll quote him to say, and I got in trouble once for even mentioning a theme in church, so if you're offended already, I hear you. <laughs> but he used to say, this is Rush Limbaugh with talent on loan from God. He's right. Everything he had came to him from God and returned to God. And we have that too. I mean, the problem he made was it was an exclusive claim. This is Rush, and I've got a town loan from God, so you listen to me, because you don't. I, I think that was the implication. That wasn't so good. But he's right. Everything he had came from God. He is God. It's like that the text about the, the word of God is the grains and the snows that, that do what they do and they return, they don't return empty. They accomplish. The purpose for which they were sent. God blesses us so we can go and be a blessing to others. Let that, that scene of these people trying to trap up Jesus and Jesus' brilliant answer linger with you this week. And then the other text that, that is so 
our flight, oh, go to the neighborhood. It's in 7 Acts 2 that we read. The Holy Spirit just came at Pentecost. They, they got let loose, right? And there's all these people who, who came to faith, and now they're just describing their daily life. And here's what the people are doing. They are getting together daily. They're worshiping. They're in the temple. They're breaking bread in their homes. And, and people are just intrigued by this. And their numbers are being added to it daily. This lifestyle they're living is winsome. These people live in the gift of eating regularly. Together. They get together daily. Oh, well, we serve them church daily. They don't have their own sketch on but you know. They get to, they live in the they get of getting to bring bread together. I think they're talking mostly meal and not so much communion, but maybe communion too. But we get to get together, don't we? In dinner group and communion, uh, and, and big meals and, and, and catching coffee during the week sometimes, we get to uh, grow together in community. We get to They get to live in the beginning of sharing what they have to accomplish the needs of others. They, they see that no one was in need, and that if anyone had need, they, they would take care of it between themselves. I know that sounds kind of communist or socialist or un American or whatever, but it's pretty darn scriptural that we take what we have and we bless others with it, that we look out for people who don't have what they need. And hopefully that's reciprocal when we find ourselves in that time of need. But even if it's not, we get to take get to meet them in their needs. And these people understand that they get to live in the gift of, of justice and mercy and humility and happiness. We get to do that. We get to give out justice. We don't have to. We get to. We get to give out mercy. We don't have to. We get to learn to be more humble. We don't have to. We probably should. so compelling is that people are looking from the outside and it's winsome and it's salutary. There's a word we want to hear in that salutary. You know, it used to be the liturgy. It's good right and salutary. It's good right and bring healing. It brings healing to people looking from the outside to see these people meeting daily and fellowship and singing and praying and being in community. And daily more people are becoming part of this community. The neighborhood is growing. Don't we want that? Don't we want more people? Don't we want more community? Don't we want more fellowship? Don't we want more ability to live out and be a blessing to others? I sure do. Let's pray. Dear God, we pray you continue to be with us as we think and discern about how to, to offer our time and our talents and our treasures. We thank you for Jesus who cuts the, the, the meat of the matter. God, everything we have is from you. Help us find ways to return it to you, maybe through our name. Pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus.
whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the apostles. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. changes in this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell love and enact your reconciling love. Today we hold in our prayers Rita, a friend of Kim Kazmar, Arthur and Barbara Searles, Don Earhart's parents, Al DeMello, Stacy M., friend of the Ducinus, Steve Ertonimo, Carol Chuchel, Jean Fernandez, Marilyn Oslo, Oslo's friend, Carly Hellini, Claudette Brier, the Al Alabanone family serving in Jordan and the Holy Land, Amparo and the ELCA congregations of the New Hampshire Conference, our partners in ministry, Ash Street Shelter, ELCA World Hunger, Lutheran Disaster Response, Sleep in Heavenly Peace, Family Promises of Southern New Hampshire, and those suffering from addiction and mental disease. Lord, in your mercy. God, our constant. You love our universe from beginning to end as the seasons change. Protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place in a more abundant season. Lord, in your mercy, you are our prayer. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear other intercessions may be offered. You have shown a special bond with the vulnerable. Keep safe those who have left their unsafe countries and are now in Belarus and Poland. Inspire others to reach out to them, to provide warm clothing and shoes, food and drink, and your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, please be with the family 
beginning and our end. Your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy. From famous saints to the people we have loved, especially we remember Carol, Assure us of your resurrection promise. Lord, in your mercy, your prayer. God, our protection and strength, we trust you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And I'll also with you. The church and peace of one. meal, you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Time for announcements. Invite your fun down here. Needs a microphone. 
Doreen, I know you saw Good morning. We thank so much Richard for all his leadership with getting the Messiah House ready for an asylum seeking family. So um, an update on that. Um, we have a, a quote now from a potential plumber for $1,700 and also for um, testing for um, mold, including doing lab reports for $479. So thank you, Richard, for all your leadership. Also, we're in the process of getting licenses, copies of um, driver's license, and also insurance cards um, for people who are volunteering to um, drive our asylum seeking family members somewhere, maybe to a grocery store, maybe to a doctor's appointment. And um, this has then uh, encouraged uh, us when we went through the training for this. And also, I, I thank um, those of you who are making contributions to the Asylum Seeking Project. I really thank you for you know, making monthly um, donations or also um, yearly donations. Now that we are working on the side of the house, some of you maybe who you know haven't invested in, in, in sharing um, your resources and might like to do that, either have money go to the Messiah House renovation or else for the assignment project. Um, you know, please consider that. Okay, thank you. Morning. 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 I just want to highlight this month again is our intent to share filling out our forms to commit to what we want to accomplish for the next year and kind of help and treasures. And we're doing a little different this year. I think you're getting that idea. There's uh, two forms, so please put them in there. And please, especially put the pledge form in the envelope and seal it, and that will go to Jack and it's confidential. And then the other form can either go in the envelope as well, we'll drop that in the basket. And the information that we're accumulating with the um, time and talents form is hopefully going to be used to kind of just find like minded people. Like, we'll accumulate the data and everyone will have access to it. So let's say uh, Terry signs up and says, I would love to do a game night. And I love to see like, wow, I circled that too. I'm going to call Terry and say, hey, Terry, we should get together and do a game night, right? <laughs> so some of the tasks will be easily accumulated, we'll accomplish those in the coming year. And some of them might be just needs that might come up and, and people will say, like, who's in charge of that? Or who would want to do that? And now we have a source of information to go to and say, oh, these five people said that they would be willing to do some racing. And please keep in mind, that is not an exhaustive list of trying to think of the main things that we tend to do in the coming year. If there's something that you do or want to do, like please add that in and it'll just remind us of, of what other avenues or activities that we want to contribute to this year. I hope that makes sense. It's new, so I'm sure there'll be kind of bumps and questions. Please come talk to me about it if you can have it. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, you might notice that, that, that the sanctuary and the narthex has been repainted. If you didn't notice, you should. It looks really nice. Um, thank you very much to everyone who helped take everything out last week and also people helped bring stuff in and, and get church ready uh, yesterday. Obviously, we're not all the way back to, to, to full operation, but we're getting there. Um, and it, that's just a drive. I want to point out to you we're, we're pondering, we're going to confirm this at council. But, but, but dropping the expectation for reservations. One, because we, we think you're responsible enough to separate yourselves, and two, because not everyone was calling anyway, so it's almost more <laughs> challenging than actually doing it. So, um, also, we, we have said as, as a threshold, if we get a 10% positivity rate for 14 days, the church is gonna close. I think right now we're at 9.1. When we said that, we said, oh, we'll never hit 10%. I don't even know, if, so we're having that, that's a bang high. Well, we're there right now. So. So um, you need to pay attention. We'll send out emails, we'll put it on the church website, Facebook, if church does get closed, then we'll revert the streaming for that week. Um, but, but just pay attention and play along with us. Please be careful in the meantime because it's a very 
and I would also like to ask if people in Shine Spire can stay for a little bit after church and you can practice after some teaching. And anyone who would like to pray Shine for Christmas, this is your chance, so you're welcome to stay. So I just need to share this picture, these pictures that Lynn uh, got during the week. This is Harold that takes the Messiah. Looks like you're thinking of a black horse cake of, of some sort. Um, we had a good celebration yesterday of his life. Um, and, and this is a fun picture. I want to make sure we've got a chance to see it. There's no real depth, but yeah, this is Harold. It's not a picture. Uh, a couple more things on the screen here. Um, you're still welcome to join our book on the Rachel Help Evans study. We would love to have you, but we're not going to be taking a hiatus until January. Super. Which leads to this. I'm going to be on vacation. I've been putting this in the up to date, but if you haven't caught it, anyway, I'm going to be uh, on vacation starting this Wednesday night when I'm in town, and I will be back December 15th. Um, it's a long time, I know. Uh, it, it's what I'm entitled to, and it's when the schedule worked. I apologize that I get the big block, but I'm so thankful that you are able to let me have this time, and I'm grateful to David and Linda and Ed and Peggy Hughes, who you haven't met yet, who will be providing worship leadership, and for those folks, and for Erica Candy, who will be providing pastoral care. Uh, the things that you need are in place, and making sure of that. Um, but thank you. It's, it's time with family in the Midwest. It's going to a wedding. It's been postponed multiple times during COVID. It's some rest and reading days. It's just getting away from here for a little bit. I love you people. I don't always love how COVID's been going the last like 18 months. I need to breathe. So thank you for providing that space. I'm really grateful. And the other thing I want to make sure you know about, uh, we're working on a new membership directory. Um, and so before we print them all out and have everyone say, oh, you spelled my name wrong, or oh, you forgot our, our dog Otis, or oh, this is our other number, or whatever your changes are, would you please go look at the, the pages on the round table and either write okay, if it's okay, or make whatever changes you have. If you don't write okay or the, make changes, Joanne will probably call you the next week or two and say, this is what we have on the paper, is this right? We want to get this as right as possible and then out to everyone's hands. Are there any other announcements this morning? Let me, let me give you a voice. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.
Now let us go in peace to love and serve our God and one another. Thanks be to God.